Hello my friends and welcome to another episode of Running with Ryan. Today I'm going jogging with a really interesting and inspiring character. Maybe you've never heard of her. She's never been on any podiums. She's never gonna set a world record. But she is gonna run over 35 marathons and ultra marathons this year. She is a huge force in the body positive movement. She is funny, she's a comedian. My friends, ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to LaToya Shante Snell. I'm gonna sneak up on her. Here she is. What's up, girl? How what you up? doing? Hey, homie. Hey, uh, <laughs> welcome to Boulder. Thank you. Thanks Thank you for coming me. all the way to Boulder for this thing. I know, you know, it's really important for you to be on this show, and yes. you came all the way from Brooklyn, and yes. you're awesome. Yeah, how do you, what do you say we go running? Oh, hell yeah. Let's oh, hell yeah, let's do it. And also, <laughs> first, can you admire this view? I mean, oh. look at that. Yeah. Do you have that in New York? Oh no, no, we have pollution and rats. Rats at um, pole dance. So no, no. <laughs> that is pretty incredible. All right, well, let's go have ourselves a wonderful day. What do you say? Yes, yes. This bolder air is going to kick my ass down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got some high altitude here, but you're going to be just fine because yes. the beautiful mountains are going to power you. First of all, I'd like to get this out of the way. Yeah. You don't drive a car, I don't drive a car. Oh. It's very rare that I meet somebody like this. <laughs> Why don't you drive? Because uh, I'm a New York City resident and uh, we're kind of spoiled. Um, yeah. We believe in trains and avoiding the $500 um, insurance a month. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Could you drive a car if you got into a car right now? Oh, it would be really, really tragic. Tragic. Hey, that's exactly like me. My friends never let me drive. How many races are you doing this year? Oh, about 38. 38 <laughs> races? No big deal. No big deal. What are the distances of all these races? Five ultras. 15 marathons, um, and the rest of them are like halves and 10 k. Just little old half marathons. Yeah, you know, just a run in the park. <laughs> <laughs> and how did you get into running? I got tricked into this. You got tricked into this? Guys, Who would do such a thing? Man, listen, I didn't run for anything more than the ice cream truck. <laughs> and I was like... <laughs> Which is a great thing to run for, by yes, the way. Yes, it is, it's really, and I still do. I'm I fast. love those bomb pops. <laughs> 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 no, but I got into this, um, about six years ago? Yeah, like close to six years ago. Um, Sign up for my half, my first half, through a friend I'm meeting this year. He's out in the UK. We've been friends on MySpace 16 years. Wow. And um, he signed up for a half marathon. I followed suit. It was a bucket list item. And somehow I fell in love with this sport. Yeah. It's not just a running, it's a people, it's a culture. Um, and that's like, I want more of it. Yeah. Yeah, how you doing? How's the other lungs? Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, damn. So when you run these races, what's your goal? Personally, like, what are you what are you striving for every time you get to the starting line? Well, this year is a challenge myself. So for the first six months, I wanted to see how far I can actually take it. Before, I'm always, like, looking to ways to face my fears. Sometimes our imaginations are like the worst people to listen to, which is your head yeah. in a dialogue. And I realized I wasn't going to get past it unless I actually went through it. Yeah. So this year in particular is to see if I can get faster as a runner, but I want other communities to get involved. People who don't see themselves as an athlete. We're all athletes. It's a matter of you know, when we choose to pick out poison. We live in a society, unfortunately, where people are very judgmental. Yes. And they'll look at somebody, okay. and whether they're their color or their shape or whatever, and they have a preconceived notion already of that person. Yeah. What are some of the things that you go through oh, with this kind of stuff? Where do I start? Some of the things get really vicious and vile. They'll attack my motherhood. How could you feel comfortable, you know, going out on these races, abandoning your family? Yeah. To someone actually attacking and poking fun at my son for being a type 1 diabetic. It's like, where do you draw the line? Yeah. And you have to question, is it about you or is it something with them? Yep. And it took years for me to get to that place yeah. of understanding. What do you say to mean people? How do you, oh. do you deal with them directly online or do you just kind of live your positive life and hope that that inspires people and you just deal with the haters? To be very honest, both. Yeah, <laughs> yeah both. Sometimes I love getting in online fights. Yeah. Like, you know, like, sometimes you want to embrace your petty say Jack, um, petty white. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, and um, it feels good for about five seconds. Yeah. Um, for me, it depends on the approach. 
uh, some people are cry for help, but I came to a peace and an understanding that you're not going to fix everybody. And regardless of, you have to ask yourself, are these people actually receptive to what you have to say? Mm -hmm. um, so there's times where I actually go back and forth. And then there's sometimes where I know the conversation's already dead before it started. Yeah. So all you can do is live your best life. Live your best life. I love it. Yeah. And you're like a super positive person. You talk about how toward the end of races, the backside of races, you're the one pumping everybody up. Oh, hell yeah. How do you do that? What's oh, your method? Man, you're at mile 22. Everything hurts. <laughs> All you want is a shower. And it's hard when you're in the back of the pack. You know, things are already being torn down. Um, the cups sometimes are gone. The stations are gone. The audience is gone. You have to entertain yourself. And sometimes, you get to entertain yourself with other runners that's actually left out there that's feeling just as bad. Yeah. Um, so instead of wallowing in that depression, I choose to enjoy it, you know? So yeah. I find ways to do it through Instagram stories, um, talking to people that's out there in the course, trying to figure out their life a little bit. And we go hand in hand across the finish line. Oh, I love it. And those, to me, those are some of the most inspirational moments at races. It's the fast guys and gals go fast, and that's great. Right. I'm proud of them. But it's the people toward the end that really have the stories. Yeah. You know, they've gone through the pain cave times 1,000 to get to that finish line. Right. And those are the people that bring a tear to my eye. Like, I mean, don't get me wrong. I would never, ever take from anyone's story. You know, sometimes when I listen to the back of the pack and even the front of the pack, people just have this disconnect. Yeah. And if we started listening to each other a little bit more, we realize how much more we have in common yeah. than the differences that separates us. Yeah. Look at this beautiful scenery. Look yeah. at this. Look at this while I get oxygen. <laughs> <laughs> she gets a little, little oxygen break. I get a view, view of my beautiful mountains. You see, I'm a North Boulder guy. I don't come to South Boulder very often. Oh, really? Yeah. This place is huge. Yeah, and it's it nice? beautiful. And I can understand why everybody's like into something like fitness like out here. Yeah. Like, why, why do you need a phone? Yeah, totally. <laughs> But you are not just a runner. No. You're near and dear to my heart, you're also a cyclist. Yes, I am. All right, let's talk about that. Oh man, I started off my journey as a road cyclist. And I would do like these crazy, like 100 milers, just for the hell of it. <laughs> and the running was relatively new. Sorry guys, I'm gonna flash you real quick. Oh uh, yeah, we got a flash. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Everybody's flashing here in Boulder. This is not New Orleans. No. <laughs> what do you love most about biking? What is it that, you know, besides the physical aspect and, you know, burning calories, whatever? Freedom. Freedom. It's a freedom. It's That's a freedom. what I'm talking about. A, like, don't get me wrong. Like, I love running. But cycling, you're able to just surrender, let your hands go, and just really just focus on what's in front of you. Yeah. And what's around you. Just take a moment to just absorb in everything, you know? Yeah. Um, and that's the reason why eventually I want to go into triathlons. Yeah. So I can get a little bit of the best of both worlds, but I have to get past this swimming. Swimming. <laughs> Swimming's yeah. hard. I suck at swimming. That's yeah. why I never got into triathlons. I feel like I'm fighting and I'm going nowhere. Yeah. Five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so when you started running, yeah. was it because you wanted to lose weight? You wanted to be more fit? You, what was the impetus for actually running? Yeah. Um, fitness in general, um, initially, my story started out as a weight loss journey. I know that's like a curse word to some people. Don't you talk about weight loss. Like, listen, <laughs> sorry guys. <laughs> this is my real part of my journey. But yeah. um, 2013, I was well over 265 pounds. Wow. And, um, it, and it's not even so much the number. Now, I can say it's not so much the number. It was the look. Yeah. Um, and the looks that people give you. Because they treat you like a third class citizen. <laughs> not yeah. even a second class, like a third class uh. citizen. It's like, we know that you're real, but we're gonna either stare at you really weirdly or act like you don't exist. Yeah. And um, I didn't like the way I felt. Mm -hmm. Not even so much the way I looked. Um, and I hated the comments that came with it. People telling me that I would be much better if I lost weight. When I lost the weight, I lost it in a year. Went down to 165 pounds. Wow. And so 270 to 165. Yeah. Wow. Over and pounds. the crazy part is, after I lost the weight, I was more unhappy than I ever was in my life. And it wasn't the weight. I realized I was using fitness and running as my placebo to do all the things I enjoyed. Yeah. That I can do at any size. Yeah. True. You know. Um, so I gained a little bit of it back, but that wasn't until I actually went through a stint of anorexia without actually knowing it. And it's one of those hard conversations to really have with people because usually they associate anorexia to having a look, yeah. you know, um, and I didn't fit that look. 
I didn't know I wasn't bone skinny. I didn't have any like signs in my teeth, but I let someone talk me into eating 1200 calories a day wow. while marathon training. Wow, 200 calories a day? No, 1200. Oh, 1200. 1200 calories. That's still not much. Yeah, so essentially I was starving myself. Long story short, dead of winter, 12 degrees outside. I'm burning and dripping up in sweat. I get out the train station, I lost my hearing, lost my vision, um, eventually passed out. And it took for a really good ER doctor to get a crisis team in to say, hey, listen, um, you may not think that you're starving yourself, but you are. And my relationship with food completely changed. And the thing is, people think like it's some kind of like aha moment. Now I'm fixed forever. Yeah. It's a process that I still fight through every day where I have to remind myself to eat. And you know, how long have you been running now? Almost six years. Six years. And I imagine this is something that's gonna be with you for the rest of your life. Oh, like, yeah. You're hooked. Yeah, as long as I have my, my mobility, I'll find a way to move. And even if I'm, you know, like, because I, I do have um, a series of health issues. Because um, I mean, as much as I don't look the part of being an athlete with disabilities, I am. Uh, I have sciatica, I have disc issues, herniated disc, uh, I have endometriosis. You have weird orange hair. Something's yes. wrong. Something's oh. wrong. Oh. oh my God. No, just kidding. The orange hair is awesome. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> this is no, this is self diagnosed. <laughs> self diagnosed. <laughs> uh. no, just that's this crazy New York syndrome. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, like, um, you know, with all these things, you have a restriction on your mobility. But when you have those things taken away from you, you realize how much it is a gift yeah. to have it and to fight for it. So my goal is to, regardless of what I do, just keep moving. But what do you say to people out there who might be watching who maybe they're like you and they're like, oh, I could never do that. I could never run a 5K. What do you say to people like that? How do you get them psyched for it? Walk for a 5K. Walk, there you <laughs> Walk go. Walk for a 5K, crawl for a 5K, break down the 5K to where it's only a mile. If a mile is too much, do just a walk down the block. You know, everything starts with a walk. It starts with movement. And for motion is motion. So we have to stop overthinking it and stop looking at it as, you know, with this, I have to be this type of body or this type of shape or have everything, all your ducks in a row. You're never ready. Yeah. So face it, let me know, head on and don't let your fears kidnap your, your joy. Should we have a, a nature break real quick? Oh yeah. Oh. Look at this, we'll get some, yeah, do that little dance. No, 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 no. It's only illusion, it's bolder air. <laughs> She's high on Colorado, not that kind of high. I told myself I would never do 100K and I did it last year. Yeah. You know, um, and for you Americans who don't know what 100K is, that's 61 miles. Oh my God. Oh my it's, God, what are you thinking? I don't know, drugs. <laughs> uh, no, 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 it was, um, no, thankfully the course had wonderful tequila. I mean, the same course that we were just talking about. Yeah, the Havilena 100, it's a good one. If you're gonna do 100K, do it there. recommend the Havilena 100 because the eight stations are all parties and everybody's dressed up. It's Halloween weekend. God, like I had a funny story with um, Havilena. I made friends with a guy and we're now Facebook buddies. Um, we took a, a shit together at mile 40 something. <laughs> <Are you serious? laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, pass over the toilet paper, please. Yeah, like, you know, like when you're running in the dark and that's like a, a fear for a lot of runners. Like, I don't want to run at nighttime. You know, your imagination gets the best of you. Like, I think that's like the tune of all this. Like, your imagination is like your worst and best enemy. Yeah. Um, so I turned off my headlamp, you know, I was like, let me cop a squat, you know, right here by this cacti. And all of a sudden I'm like, oh no. I'm like, so he's like, oh no, 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 don't come any closer. And I'm like, and he's like, do you have tissue? And I'm like, what? I'm like, I got, and he's like, do you have anything to like wipe yourself? And I'm like, dude, I got this disposable wipe. And he's like, you know, so I throw it at him. He's like, hey, what's your name? And we became friends. <laughs> I'd like to show off that we both have really bright, colorful Hoka speed goats. Hoka? Hoka and look at these socks. Look uh -oh. at those socks. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about fear. Fear holds back a lot of humans with not only athletics, but work, projects, relationships, love. Right. How do you combat fear? You gotta face it head on, man. Um, fear is our worst enemy. Um, and sometimes we make it scarier than it actually is. You know, uh, when I think about it in relation to running athletics, you know, it's usually our mind that'll stop us. Not even so much things that people will say to us. Those things contribute to it, but it's our, it's, our, it's a, this self-defeatist talk yeah. that we have. Um, I like to call myself a recovering self-defeatist. Um, for many years, I wanna say, for about 27 years of my life, I talked myself out of almost every success that came my way. I think I would have, 
been more successful in my life if I would have gave myself a chance. Most of us are so terrified that once we hit a certain point, how can I do better than last time? Yeah. And part of doing better than last time means that you have to surrender to the fall. Um, you know, we think that we have to be perfect. Nobody's perfect. If you're, not per if you're perfect, you're not human. You know? <laughs> yeah. you know, don't be afraid to screw up once in a while. It's supposed to happen. There's growth and there's a learning experience by actually failing. Let's have uh, a timeout. We got horses here. Yeah. Timeout. Hey guys. Hi. Sorry. Hi. Back, back to the fear conversation. Right. Yeah. Like um. When I think about all of the things that I stopped myself for 27 years from doing, it was always this doubt that was implanted for myself and with from others. It was like the internal dialogue was, are you worthy enough of doing mm -hmm. X, Y, and Z? That was in relations to work, uh, to fitness, to health. Uh, my darkest point, I literally was told by my doctor, if I kept this up, I was going to die. And wow. I remember seeing my doctor's face he's a really good guy and um, I remember seeing his face and he's like that's just he's like you know what are you gonna do about this and I was like I guess I'll die <laughs> that was my wow. response you know and that's really dark you know yeah. to tell somebody that but you have to understand the mindset of what get people to that place you know where you almost manifest failure mm -hmm. and that's a job in itself to keep yeah. up and if we put in even a quarter of work of trying to do the best that we possibly can and this doesn't have to be dynamic sometimes we're looking at these goals like it has to be something like grandeur no reduce it down make it smaller hey i want to run a marathon one day cool let's start off with a 5k oh i'm doing this house of 5k program but it's not working out for me it's telling me by this week i should be running a straight mile with no breaks screw that add on four more weeks <laughs> like like rules are meant to be broken yeah exactly so, if you're following these rules of how you're supposed to be how do you know how to actually improve the next time if you're never daring to take a chance on yourself or the program challenge these things question these things ask yourself why am i so hard on myself you know um and that's why i love fitness so much because if you feel that struggle that's progress yeah. um when you get to that level of comfort it's good but at the same time if you're there for too long you're stagnant yep. and then you get bored then you're wondering why you're doing this every year the reasons why i run change as i meet different people i get to hear different people's conversations uh i remember meeting a follower i won't say her name <laughs> um first 20 minutes of meeting her she uplifted me and said oh my god you're so dynamic but everything about what she said about herself was super self-defeatist. Oh, I'm so stupid. I'm so clumsy. And it's this. And in the middle of us talking, I was like, stop. I was like, I want you to listen to yourself. I'm like, all those wonderful things you're saying about me, you can't say one positive thing about yourself. Yeah. And it's something that you can acknowledge in people's dialogue and what they don't say. Their body language can tell you a lot about a person. Yeah. Um, and a lot of my body language changed as I became more confident in who I am, uh, what I look like. Uh, when I on my rough days, and I still have them because people get eluded, like they get this delusion about me that, oh, you're an athlete, you're a professional athlete, so you don't have bad days. No, <laughs> I have them more. We all have them. <laughs> yeah, I have them more than people may know. And the thing that gets me out of it is I intentionally force myself to do the things that I hate, which this is going to sound terrible. Terrible. One of the things I used to hate doing was looking in the mirror. Wow. Um, and that's something that I hear a lot of people in the plus size community complain about. I don't like looking at the full body or I don't like taking full pictures because people are going to see my fat before they see me. What I do, I keep a pen near my, um, my bed from my bedside and I have sticky notes and I choose the area that I hate the most and I write three good things about it. Oh. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. There's no, hey, I like my stomach, but it's too big today. No, uh. I write three positive things about it. I don't care how stupid it may sound at that moment. It's three th good things I can carry on for the rest of the day. And I rinse, wash, repeat it until I start to feel better about myself. I don't care what background you are. I don't care how much you think you're going to hate me. Baby, we're going to find two things about ourselves that we have in common and we're going to run with it. You ah. like yellow? I like yellow. I Let's love that. <laughs> we are going to run with it. <laughs> we're going to run with it. Like, if we focus too much on these negatives, 
we're never gonna be able to grow. Yes, I'm not asking you to walk around this bubble and act like these things don't exist, but ask yourself, how can you grow from it? Oh, I just, I just wanna give you a ah. hug. This is so wonderful. It is a beautiful day to be alive on planet Earth. I wish I could take like some more New Yorkers out here yeah. and see what I see. Like, you know, the gift of traveling, being a traveling athlete, so I get to experience different people, different cultures, um, and the surroundings. Uh, yeah. It reminds you how much more is around you, and it makes everything so much smaller. Yeah. Like even the petty things, it makes them so much smaller when you're able to look at things like this. Yeah, I mean that is just awe-inspiring. Yes. I have another question. Yes. In the running world, there aren't a lot of people of color. Yes. And there aren't a lot of plus-size people. Oh. Pink elephant. Pink, yeah. <laughs> you show up to the start line, you don't look like most people. No, um, I stand out. Um, everybody think I'm Jamaican when I go to other places. <laughs> they're like, oh, you look beautiful. And then they'll say things like, yeah, man. And I'm like, dude, that's like, dude, that's really, really, like, wrong. <laughs> yeah. Just because you have dreads or yeah, something? Yeah, like, yeah, it's the dreads. In the beginning, it was really hard because you never want to feel like you're alone. I look around at races and I realize I'm the only person of color. Not like just black person, but in general, the yeah. only person of color out there. And then people will make snarky remarks like, are you out here for the 5K? And if there's like the shortest distance is a marathon. I'm like, you know I'm not out here for the fucking 5K. You know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it sucks, there's a hurt. Yeah. But um, I also think it's a barrier that's not only placed when, you know, outside of the community, but within the community. There's a fear, again, that word comes up a lot. Yeah. Um, there's a fear of the unknown. If you don't see enough of something, you don't take advantage of it. You don't, you know, you don't want to be the first. Now, some people drive off of it. I'm personally like, I don't, I don't drive off of it, but I don't also desire it either. Mm -hmm. I feel like if you put yourself out there, other people will come too. And you have to make it accessible. Yeah. And I think that's really the biggest thing that's the issue in our community when it comes down to people being a person of color and being a plus size athlete is seeing it. So there is certain things I think that race directors can actually do to get more people and more diversity out there. Show more of our faces, invite us out there. Yeah. Tell us that, hey, you're wanted. Yes, it's the, it's the boondocks of Idaho. Who gives a shit? Come out here. <laughs> you know, like the way to be inclusive is to show people that they can show up without judgments. Take along a friend. We all have a plus size buddy or maybe a friend of color. You don't realize how much more you have to put out there just for being yourself. And it makes and other people look at you as the outsider. Um, and sometimes I experience that at races. But I show up because I want more people to show up. I want people to know that, yes, this is open for you too. Like, make space. Don't think that you're taking up space that you don't belong or you're going through some imposter syndrome. Just being there is a statement of its own. I can't thank, thank you, you enough, I mean, for, for doing this. And for all you out there watching this, I'm gonna link some of the really awesome films that she's been a part of and articles. You can get to know her better. She's an incredible human. She lives in Brooklyn. If you're out there, go say hi. Give her yes. a high five on the streets. Please, like, but, like, and don't get all like scared. Like, uh, I don't wanna interrupt you. Listen, I will bear hug the shit out of you. She will bear hug you, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining me at another Running with Ryan. We will see you down the road. And, uh, oh wait, we gotta end this with uh Oh yeah. Okay, let, let, let me get, uh -oh. let me, let's get this all set up here. We're gonna. <laughs> <laughs> this is the grand finale here. Da, da, da. Da, da, da. Okay, here da, we go. Da, hold up. She's gonna pick me up. Yes! Oh, oh yes! my gosh, look at this! She's oh, also a power door. lifter! <laughs> ah, ah, this is amazing! Oh, you are, wow, that was like nothing for no, you. Nothing. Like, I could do <laughs> <laughs> Why weren't we doing that the whole time? I know, way? right? Like,